Welcome to Kingdom Connection with Pastor Jensen Franklin. To say we're living in unprecedented times would be an understatement. A global pandemic, uncertainty and upheaval, clamor and chaos. I want to talk about Satan's master man. And this is found in the book of Revelation chapter 13. And I'll begin reading uh, in, with the 11th verse. Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth. He had two horns and like a lamb, he spoke like a dragon. It's an interesting phrase. I'll I'll refer to it in just a moment. And he exercises all the authority of the beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Notice that. Whose deadly wound was healed. Verse 13. He performs great signs so that even he makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. He deceives, there it is again, those who dwell on the earth by the signs which he has been granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image of the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. And he's granted the power to give breath to the image of the beast. And the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. This is very important. Verse 16. He causes all men, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, And that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark of the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the numbers of the beast. For it is the number of a man. His number is 666. And I'll stop reading there for the sake of time, but we will refer to many other Bible verses. You see, the Bible is very, very clear. Standing in the shadows of history is a man. This is in the Old Testament, and it comes to light in the New Testament. Prophecies, all of them saying the same thing, that there is coming out of the shadows of history a man known as the Antichrist. Some of his names that are given in Scripture are, as you heard in this text, the beast. One of the other names that's given to him a lot is the man of sin. One translation says the man, and one of the main names that he's given is the man of lawlessness, the son of perdition, the little horn. Many of these names are given, and notice that in Revelation 17 and verse 5, Something happens. How does he come? Where does he come from? Well, the Bible talks about in the book of Revelation that the sea is seething, that there is social agitation that he will arise out of. The sea represents the multitudes of people of the earth. And the scripture clearly predicts that Satan's Superman is coming up out of troubled waters And when the Bible refers to the waters, and I don't have time to break this all down, but it is very easily proven what I'm saying, that that is a direct reference to social agitation. That nation uh, or uh, ethnic group, one translation says, race against race, social agitation will be taking place, not only in one nation, but worldwide. There will be all of this unrest. It's like the Bible said the wicked are like a troubled sea. And the muck and the mire is being brought up. And that is exactly what is taking place in our world today. The nations of the world and the masses of the seas of people of the world are, are, are troubled like a sea. And the muck and the mire are coming up in our society. And the Bible clearly warns that out of that social agitation and that troubled sea of humanity... Well, he said, I saw, notice what he said, I saw a beast. I saw a beast. So I want you to see with me for just a few moments some of the things that the Bible teaches 
about the beast, Satan's superman, Satan's master man. You see, the devil always mimics God. We have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And Satan has the dragon. Separate from the dragon is the beast. And separate from the beast is the false prophet. The dragon is a reference to Satan. The beast is a reference to the Antichrist. And the false prophet is like the Holy Spirit is for Jesus. The false prophet that will come because Revelation 16 and 13 said, I saw out of the sea come three frogs. And this is again, this is, this is a prophecy of these three spirits that will come. Satan, the beast, and the false prophet. Satan will be a servant. Uh, or, or, uh, there will come a servant of Satan. The Antichrist will be a servant of Satan. He will be Satan in skin, if you can imagine such a thing. Just as Jesus was God in skin, Satan will show up on planet earth in skin. And notice that he said that he would have uh, the breath of a dragon. He's got dragon's breath. In other words, he speaks. And when he speaks as a dragon, he is a master liar. That much of the, uh, much of the damage that the Antichrist will do will be to deceive with power for persuasive, persuasive words. He will tell the nations of the world lies. The beast is the name that he has given. Evolutionists like to tell us that we came, man came from beast. But no, we didn't come from beast. We came from God. But this world is headed for a beast. A man that is indescribably wicked. A man that is hideously handsome. A man that is brilliantly able. A man who has the heart of a beast. He will have the... He will be persuasive and very uh, much a powerful leader and a powerful presence. And he will be able to sway the world. This man that is known as the Antichrist, we're told the sea represents the world and the wicked like the sea. And out of that social agitation... He will arise. When, when, when the world begins to just almost come apart, it feels like it's just teetering on destruction. Out of that social unrest will come the Antichrist. We're already seeing that spirit. The spirit of Antichrist, the Bible said, is already at work. And the only thing that restrains it, this is in 2 Timothy, is the Holy Spirit in us. That's the only thing that's holding back the forces and hordes of hell. And we're seeing the spirit of Antichrist with the, with the uh, horrible destruction in the streets and the looting and the burning of entire blocks and neighborhoods, the lawlessness, the the, the attacks on innocent men and women, we're seeing the spirit of Antichrist show himself. And then we know that the Bible talks about the nation of Russia and how that they will play a major role. And Russia in the book of Ezekiel is a bear. And one of the emblems of Russia is the bear. And, and the only thing worse than a bear, a big mean bear, is a wounded bear. And Russia is a wounded bear right now because their economy is failing. There's so much corruption up top that the wealth is not reaching the people and there is tremendous unrest and it's a very agitated bear, the old Russian bear. It's a wounded bear. The only thing worse than fighting a big grizzly bear is trying to fight a wounded one. And we're seeing that prophecy of Russia. And all you got to do is read the book of Ezekiel, read the prophecies of how that Russia plays a major role in the rise of the Antichrist. And then China. Now we see China. And again, this is not a word against the race of people. They're precious people. We're all the same, but it's evil, uh, demonic, 
uh, con- powers that control the governments and evil spirits are empowering these, some of these government leaders, many of them. Plagues erupting all over the world and the world is being turned into a seething sea of unrest. And out of that will come this one called the son of Satan, the devil, like father, like son. Just like uh, Jesus said, if you have seen me, you have seen the father. The Antichrist will say, if you've seen me, you've seen my father, Satan, like father, like son. The Bible in Daniel's vision talks about an image that had the face of a lion. And this is in the goes through the book of Revelation also that has that has the face of a lion and a bear and a leopard and a dragon. It has the lion's characteristics of a stately walk of a lion, but teeth that shred. The strength of a bear. This is a description of the Antichrist with claws that, that, that rip to pieces. The leopard is a reference to the speed that rapidly this Antichrist, this beast will rapidly establish his kingdom across nation after nation. Blitzkrieg, quick, fast, he will take control. And we see all of these signs that are coming to pass. And the Bible calls him a beast because he has a beastly nature. He has the flesh of a human, but his heart is like a beast. And it will rip and it will kill and it will destroy. With He is a psychopathic killer that has no emotions in what he is doing. The Bible said... That he will be greatly intelligent. I don't have time to just take you to all these verse for verse, but this is very clear in scriptures. He will be a global charmer, the Antichrist. He will be handsome. And there's something interesting that we read in in this verse. It said that he will be wounded. This is in verse uh, 14 of Revelation 13. And and he will dwell on the earth. and, uh, And it says, and he will be wounded and in the head, and I just thought, there it is in verse 12 actually, whose deadly wound was healed. So something is going to happen to the Antichrist when he comes on the scene. There will be three years of peace. There will be three years of prosperity. There will be three and a half years of incredible wealth and blessing. And people will be just amazed at how wonderful the world is doing. And in the
middle of that, he will be wounded in the head. And then he will come back to life. This is interesting because it sounds like an imitation of the resurrection. And I wonder with cloning now, and it's, it's just a fact, you can, you can check it out, that, that in many nations that don't have laws like we have, they're not only cloning animals, but they're cloning human beings. And they are close to, if not already, secretly, probably uh, close to cloning human beings completely. Could it be that you have a body when someone is cloned and you have a soul, which is the mind, but that person, because God gives the spirit, God breathed into the breath of man, his spirit and made him a living soul, the Bible said. Could it be that the Antichrist reference of being shot, wounded, or whatever happens to his head, that he is mortally wounded, he comes back to life, an imitation of the resurrection. And could it be at that moment, Satan makes his entry, not into that cloned body that has flesh and has a mind and has Satan himself incarnate, inside of a human person's body. This is, you say, well, I, I just can't believe that. Then you can't believe that Jesus was God and, and, and God was in Jesus and, and it was the hope of glory. And that's why everywhere he went, such power, he, he, he turned the world upside down. In the same way, ladies and gentlemen, Satan is a copycat. He imitates the resurrection. He imitates the Holy Trinity. He imitates... Not only that, but he will be in the body, the human body, possess completely the body of the Antichrist. He will have a seductive appeal. An unholy ambition of the beast will be to be worshipped. This goes all the way back to the book of Isaiah 14. He does not want you to worship God. He wants you to worship Him. In Isaiah 14, Lucifer was the worship leader of heaven. He had musical instruments in his body. This is all in your Bible in the book of Ezekiel. Read it. I've done many preachings and teachings on this. And being a musician, it just always uh, did thorough studies of all the musicians in the Bible. And it's, 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 it's a lot there. But he had musical instruments. He has three categories of musical instruments in his bodies. In his body, the Lucifer does. He was heaven's worship. Leader and the Bible said that the noise of his strings, the noise of his uh, of of his uh, uh, trump, uh, the wind instruments, the pipes, the wind instruments. That's the saxophone, things like that. The the wind wind blows through and causes that. That would include the brass section and the strings and the timbrels or drums. So there are only three categories of musical instruments, and every instrument fits in one of those. Strings would be violins, guitars, timbre would be drums drums and percussion and and then the wind instrument saxophone trumpet trombone all of that all of that was in lucifer's body all of that was there and he said i will ascend above the throne of god and i will lead and have my own worship I'm, i don't want to worship god i don't want to worship him i want to be worshiped well that spirit will manifest through the antichrist that was in heaven and he got cast out it will manifest on planet earth he will dominate society global control all the world will follow after him, the scripture said, and he will have a number and that number will, will mark you. That number will become the way that you trade and you buy and you sell. And if you don't come up under this system of the beast, you will not. Notice what it said. You will not be able to buy or sell. He will be, the Antichrist will be a controller of commerce. You can't buy clothes. You can't buy food. You, you know, just this little COVID thing was a scare because when it first happened, there was such a shortage that you had to stand outside and then to get in the grocery store. And when you went in the grocery store, you, you had entire shelves that had nothing on it. You had to wait. You couldn't just get, you know how you can just go in. I want my, I want my frosted flakes. I want them now. Well, they weren't there. They weren't there. And for the first time in my lifetime in America, we had, we had food shortages. Well, that's just the tremor. That's just the beginning of things to come. A cashless society. A cashless. And because of COVID, 
You know, a lot of companies said, uh, and a lot of like fast food and stuff, they said, we don't want to touch the money. We might get the disease. And so we have, whether we realize it or not, have become major, major cash. societies. Everything is controlled. Smart cards. It's coming. It's coming. And what I want you to understand is simply this, that we're facing in this time some things that no other generation has ever faced. And in that moment, you're going to have to make a choice if you're left behind and you're not ready for the coming of the Lord. You're going to have to choose to take the mark of the beast. But I love the fact, too, that the Bible says, if you read in chapter 14, listen to this. He said, And then I looked, and behold, a lamb standing on Mount Zion with 144,000. That means there's going to be some people who are going to take a stand, even if it costs them everything. And for it was the number of man. His number is 666. Uh, 666 but then go down to verse 1. His father's name. So you got, you got those who get a number, a number... 666, but there's others who are standing with the Lamb in chapter 14. And this is what it says in the 144,000, having the Father's name written on their foreheads. <laughs> I love the fact that the Lamb gives you a name, the Antichrist gives you a number. You're a number to Satan. You have a name. Praise God. You're part of the royal family. It's the Father's name on you. You got to choose the, the Lamb or the beast. You gotta choose, don't you see? And, and maybe I haven't got it all right. Maybe, maybe I've confused you some on, on this. Maybe you got more questions. That's kind of why I've never been a big prophecy preacher. I'm just trying to keep it basic prophecy 101. I can tell you your spirit, if you're a believer, is witnessing with what I'm saying. Something is going on. The signs of the times are everywhere. You don't, you don't have, the signs of the times are in the New York Times. That's how close we are to the coming of the Lord. And it's every day something new. And the question is, are you going to take the number from the beast? Or will you receive the name from the Father? You know what that name is? Jesus. And whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I don't know everything. I can't, I'm not, I'm not standing up here. I'm believing that we have generations before Jesus comes, but that's up to the Holy Spirit. No man knows. 
Our job is to get ready for the coming of the Lord and to occupy as salt and light and shine the love of Jesus Christ and tell the world that Jesus is Savior. He died. He rose again. He carried our sins to the cross and He'll give you eternal life. And if you're weary, if you're tired, if you're depressed, if you're suicidal, if you're addicted and you can't stand yourself, if you can't shake it, you pick the bottle back up, you pick the drugs back up, and it's overtaking your life. The same Jesus that turned water into wine can turn wine back into water and set you free. Hallelujah. I'm preaching myself happy. I'm telling you today that this is a time where you need to draw near to Jesus. Get yourself right with God and know where you stand because He's coming again. And I, 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 for one, I, I can't wait to see what God has in store for the church. Because He has something in store for the church. And I want to encourage you today. There will be enforced worship under the beast. There will be controlled wealth under the beast. But Jesus says, I offer you freedom. I offer you eternal life and life more abundantly. I offer you joy in the midst of tribulation. That's our Savior. Kingdom can next reach further than we've ever been before. To become a part of this ministry and enjoy exclusive partner benefits, visit us on to over 200 nations around the globe, produce inspirational resources, and continue support for outreach projects. All donations received through a campaign are subject to redirection at the discretion of the organization.